Here we go, the final game in the original Ninja Gaiden trilogy. Let's talk about Ninja Gaiden 3, the ancient ship of doom. Now that's a mouthful. Ninja Gaiden 3 opens up with a really weird cutscene. We witness CIA agent Irene Liu as she's being chased by a mysterious ninja, who turns out to be our old friend, Ryu Hayabusa. The couple seems to have a domestic dispute, ending with Irene tumbling from a cliff and into her death. The game immediately gives away that Ryu didn't kill Irene, but was framed by an evil doppelganger. Out for revenge, Ryu travels to a laboratory his GF was investigating. This first stage gives us some time to get used to the game. The game looks sharper and more polished, and the controls seem more fluid this time around. Ninja Gaiden 3 removed the Ninja Clone ability from the first game, but added some new stuff, like Ryu grunting while swinging his sword. Tecmo also added some new, interesting platforming mechanics to the game. And look, there is quicksand now to make your life more miserable. That's great, but let's move on. Reaching the end of the laboratory, Ryu runs into a mysterious stranger, telling him that he has to go to the Castle Rock Fortress to figure out what happened to Irene. On his way to said fortress, Ryu has to learn that the CIA agent Foster is somehow involved in Irene's death. Oh, we haven't seen him for a while. Our hero also runs into his evil doppelganger, but is easily outmatched by him. Ryu is later told by Clancy, the guy from the beginning, what is actually going on here. Even though Ryu defeated the demon in the second game, its death left behind a rift between dimensions. Powerful life force energy is now seeping through that rift, and Foster is using that energy to supercharge his artificial super soldiers, the so-called Bionoids. Having none of that, Ryu rushes to the fortress. Wait, is that building flipping me off? Yeah, that building is totally flipping me off. Our hero reaches faster in the dimensional rift, but has to defeat his evil doppelganger first, who of course goes Super Saiyan. The bad guy offers Ryu to blast him with life force energy. Nice. But our hero politely declines the offer. Irene suddenly shows up. What a twist! And Clancy joins the party too, just to reveal that he was the big bad guy after all. What a twist! Both Faust and Clancy enter through the dimensional rift, and Ryu follows them. We find ourselves on an ancient dimensional warship, and have to duke it out with a transformed Foster. Our brave hero eventually reaches Clancy, who turned into a weird thing too. How come that Faust and Clancy got more powerful by entering the rift, but Ryu didn't? That's weird. Nevertheless, I guess you know what comes next. Ryu defeats Clancy, just for him to transform into a Xenomorph knockoff. And of course, the game doesn't end after Clancy Morph's death. He changes a third, and thankfully last time. Now this fight... This fight is a bitch. Just look at that close call. No continues, and only two seconds left on the clock, and I still pulled it off. Who's awesome? I'm awesome! Yeah! <clears throat> Sorry. Ryu escapes the hellish dimension, the ancient ship of doom is destroyed, and the world is saved. The game ends with Irene and Ryu watching as the rock castle fortress collapses. I guess they later celebrated with Ryu blasting Irene with his life force energy. Nice. Well, that was Ninja Gaiden 3. Out of the original trilogy, this is easily my favorite game. The gameplay improved much from the first title, and the difficulty is just right, except for the final boss fights. Besides the obvious story twists, it still pulls off to tell a compelling story, even though it ends pretty much like all the other previous games. If you're looking for an original Ninja Gaiden game to play, I would definitely suggest to check this game out. Next time, we will take a look at the Ninja Gaiden Game Boy game, Ninja Gaiden Shadow. Until then, thank you for watching. And bye bye.